If you're printing your work and want an accurate rendition between screen and print, calibrating to ISO 3664 just isn't enough. The brightness might be accurate between our screen and our print, but our white point and contrast will differ from paper to screen. This depends on, of course, what paper we're printing on and our viewing conditions. The reason for this is there are different versions of white because our brains keep on adjusting the color that we see based on the lighting conditions. If we hold a blank piece of our favorite printing paper under tungsten light, it will appear white. If we do the same under window light, it will also appear white and so on. If we were to compare a blank sheet of paper against the pure white document opened in Photoshop on a monitor that's calibrated to D65, the monitor will appear too blue by comparison. Our environment, for example, might be lit by tungsten light, which is around 3800 Kelvin, and our eyes will have adjusted to that. Even with D50 lighting, our D65 monitor will still appear too blue. Another variable to this equation is the base color of our printing paper as well. Some papers, especially the fine art papers, tend to have a warmer base, and that warmth will vary from paper to paper. Standardizing lighting conditions for the accurate appraisal of prints is imperative. So where do we start? For the practical appraisal of prints, ISO 3664-2009-P2 viewing conditions recommends D50 lighting and a brightness of 500 lux, plus or minus 125 lux for tone reproduction evaluation. To make my evaluation between screen and print, I use a D50 light booth with variable brightness control. This allows me to set the specific luminance. Alternatively, we can use other means of achieving D50 lighting in our environment. We could install 12 volt Solux globes above our workstation, as shown in this image on the screen. We could also install GTI Graphic Light 100 color viewing lamps, which are the fluorescent type. Or quite simply, we could also use a Felix desktop color viewing lamp, which is also dimmable. Whichever method you use, the idea here is to standardize our viewing conditions. As mentioned, contrast is also an issue. Our monitor, calibrated for editing purposes, yields a contrast ratio of around 1000 to 1, maybe sometimes even greater than that. The contrast of printed media is usually around 200 to 1, and sometimes even less, depending on the paper that we're printing on. So how do we change this? Quite simply, in Color Navigator 7, we can adjust the black point in relation to our monitor brightness. If my brightness level is 100 candela, then my black point will be 0.5. 100 divided by 0.5 gives me 200, 200 to 1 ratio. If my monitor brightness is set to 80, then my black point will be 0.4. 80 divided by 0 0.4 gives us 200, 200 to 1. So now let's launch Color Navigator 7 and create a target for our printing appraisal. Here we are in Color Navigator 7 and we are going to create a new target for our printing workflow. We're going to select one of our color modes, our, one of our empty ones, which is Cal 2. And in this, we are going to create a new target setting and we're going to enter our parameters manually. Before we give the target a name, let's talk about some of the settings, beginning with our brightness. The brightness you'll set will depend on what brightness is going to give us a good match between our monitor and the print density. This, of course, is going to be based on our viewing conditions. Now, assuming that 100 candela already gives us a good correlation as far as density is concerned between monitor and print, we'll stick with 100. We then have to come down and set our black level because we want to bring the contrast down of the monitor to around 200 to 1. And because we have chosen here 100 as our brightness, our black point or our black level should be set to 0.5. 100 divided by 0.5 is going to give us that 200 to 1 contrast ratio. The next thing we need to adjust is our white point. 6500 Kelvin, as we mentioned earlier, 
is still going to appear too blue in relation to our D50 viewing conditions. So I'm going to bring that value down to 5,800 Kelvin. I find that 5,800 works really, really well, and it gives me a pretty good match uh, between all of the different papers that I choose to print on. Our gamma is set to 2.2. The priority here I'll set to gray balance, as this is going to be a soft proofing target. Gamut, we're going to leave that as native. In the ICC profile policy, we're going to leave that at every calibration. Let's go back to the top now and give the target a name based on the parameters. I always like to include the parameters in the name as it makes it easy for me to then work out what I've done with the actual target itself. For example, the brightness that we've set for this target is 100 candela. So we'll put that in. The white point that we've set is 5,800 Kelvin, so we'll put that in as well. And of course our black point, because this automatically is going to tell me that we achieved a lower contrast just by looking at the name. So 0.5 candela per meter square. Then what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to set the color mode name. And the color mode name that I'll set is print. So I'll be able then to access this through the mode button on the front of the monitor as well. So once I'm happy with all of that, I am going to click on OK. And this is the target name, and this is the parameters that we set in. We'll click on Finish. So all we've done now is set the parameters for our target, but now we need to calibrate. And once we're ready to do that, we'll hit the Calibrate button. We'll select our measurement device. This particular monitor that I'm using has a built-in sensor. Um, but if your model doesn't have this, then whatever sensor you have um, connected to your computer will be displayed here. We hit Next. And we click on to proceed and the calibration process will begin. Once calibration is complete, our results of what we have achieved with our calibration um, are here on the right hand side. Our brightness, our black level, and of course, most importantly, our contrast and also our screen you'll note um, has become warmer. We'll click on finish and over here you can see that now our color mode number 10 is for printing and I can quickly change that um, state of the monitor to an editing state by clicking on editing and of course I can do this also on the front of the monitor by clicking onto the mode button uh, quickly changing from editing back to print.